hello students this is dr ali mahajan from inspiring minds today we are going to talk about bilirubin metabolism which is very important to understand the pathophysiological basis of a very important syndrome which is jaundice so let's start how this bilirubin metabolism occurs in our body so students we have one type of cells which are blood blood cells which are rbcs or other name is known to be the erythrocytes these cells have the life span of 120 days when this life span of 120 days will get over this has to go to its graveyard the spleen so about the bilirubin metabolism we will start with the rbc's destruction the rbc cells the life span is 120 days after its span is over this goes to graveyard of the, its rbcs known as spleen in the spleen those destroyed cells are taken up by the splenic macrophages in the spleen those cells are taken up by the splenic macrophages and they act upon those cells and with the further metabolization those cells release hemoglobin and from the hemoglobin we have heme part and globin part but for the biliary metabolism the metabolization of heme is really important so from their rbc destruction occurs the release of heme release of heme this heme gets converted into unconjugated unconjugated gated bilirubin bilirubin this unconjugated bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin is a lipid soluble molecule that means it can't get soluble in water this unconjugated bilirubin is a lipid soluble molecule when it gets formed after, after the conversion of heme into the unconjugated bilirubin it has to go to the blood to go to the blood it has one uh, molecule which is known as albumin so this unconjugated bilirubin gets formed after relief uh, after the conversion of heme into it then unconjugated bilirubin in the circulation it only can goes when it combines with albumin albumin but for the bilirubin metabolism this unconjugated bilirubin unconjugated bilirubin has to go to the liver before it enters to the liver this unconjugated bilirubin gets detached from the albumin and here it's going to enter the liver the hepatocyte into the hepatocyte friends the molecule which helps the unconjugated bilirubin to enter inside the hepatocyte or the liver name is oatp organic organic anion transport protein transport protein transport protein so here it is your oatp molecule which is a transport protein from the in the liver already present one molecule which is known as utp utp unconjugated bilirubin enters in the liver with the help of the molecule and it combines with this utp and form conjugated bilirubin bilirubin and friends conjugated bilirubin unlike the unconjugated bilirubin is water soluble conjugated bilirubin is water soluble water soluble but this conversion into the conjugated bilirubin by the combination of unconjugated bilirubin and utp 
done with the help of one enzyme known as UGT. UGT friends stand for UTP glucuronide transferase. Glucuronide transferase. Now this unconjugated bilirubin ribbon enters with the help of transport molecule O ATP combines with the UTP. But before combining it with the UTP, one reaction occurs, uh, which is the unconjugated bilirubin the unconjugated bilirubin binds with the glutathione. Before it binds with the UTP and forms the conjugated bilirubin, it binds with the glutathione or we say glutathione reaction occurs. This glutathione, why it has to bind with or glutathione? Because this glutathione, when, when the unconjugated bilirubin binds with the glutathione, it prevents the reflux of the unconjugated bilirubin. It enters the liver, so it does not go back to the circulation. This glutathione reaction is take, taking place. The, uh, the binding of the unconjugated bilirubin with the glutathione thion takes place. So let's revise till now. I have said that we are studying bilirubin metabolism, which is the pathological basis of the jaundice. In, in the body, we have RBCs. RBCs after the lifespan of 120 days goes to a spleen. Those cells which goes to a spleen, they are acted upon by the splenic macrophages and after the metabolization, releases the hemoglobin and after further metabolization, releases the hemoglobin part. For the biliary metabolism, the release of heme is important since the heme gets converted into the unconjugated bilirubin. An unconjugated bilirubin, it has to go, it has to get transported to the blood. For transportation into the blood, it has to bind to one molecule which is albumin. And for the biliary metabolism, this unconjugated bilirubin has to enter the liver hepatocyte. This unconjugated bilirubin gets dashed from the albumin and enters the liver with the help of one molecule OATP, organic anion transport protein. When it enters the liver, it, it first of all binds with the glutathione or glutathione reaction takes place so that the unconjugated bilirubin does not uh, uh, reflux back to the circulation. So then after that in the liver already present one molecule which is UTP. It unconjugated bilirubin binds with the UTP leads to the formation of conjugated bilirubin which is a water soluble molecule. This conjugated bilirubin which is a water soluble molecule this conversion occurs with the help of enzyme UGT. UTP glucuronide transferase. From here, the conjugated bilirubin go, goes to the intra, intra, and extra hepatic bind ducts. Bind ducts. Understandable till now. This conjugated bilirubin goes to the intra and extra hepatic bind ducts. From here, this bilirubin. This bilirubin rubin, along with the bile, along with the bile, gets stored into the gallbladder. Into the gallbladder. Understandable. This bilirubin, along with the bile, we, we know in gallbladder we have stored bile. Now, whenever the gallbladder contraction has to take place, or whether when we eat, uh, you know, the first certain fatty foods, the gallbladder contracts. Whenever the gallbladder contraction takes place, this bilirubin goes to the intestine. Intestine. Understandable? Now it goes to the intestine. And in, in intestine, we know we have our gut bacteria. Gut bacteria. This gut bacteria acts on the bilirubin, which came to the intestine and leads to the formation of a pigment known as stercobilinogen. Friends, this stercobilinogen is a 
very important pigment which is a yellow colored pigment yellow color pigment pigment which is responsible for giving us the yellow color in the stools okay so from here when the gut bacteria acts on the intestine converts to stercobilinogen but certain amount of this pigment goes back to the liver through the enterohepatic cir circulation enterohepatic circulation or it goes back to the blood or it goes back to the blood circulation circulation once from the stricobilinogen stricobilinogen some part goes to the enterohepatic circulation and certain part goes to the blood circulation when it goes to blood circulation i told you the conjugated bilirubin is a water soluble it excreted out through the urine into the kidneys uh, it's created out through the kidneys into the urine and leads to the formation of one more molecule urobilinogen bilinogen urobilinogen and this is that molecule which is responsible for giving the yellow color of the urine yellow color of urine understandable this is the biliary mat uh, bilirubin metabolism so let's revise and we'll discuss a few points so i told you friends we have cells RB uh, rbcs which has a lifespan of 120 days after the lifespan gets over it goes to the its graveyard which is known to be the spleen spleen in the spleen those cells are uh, acted upon by the splenic macrophages and with the further further metabolization of those cells we got heme then the heme gets converted into the unconjugated bilirubin which is known to be the lipid soluble molecule this unconjugated bilirubin gets into the blood circulation with the help of only albumin Where now for the bilirubin metabolism it has to come to the liver so unconjugated bilirubin and albumin the unconjugated bilirubin gets detached from the albumin and enters the liver with the help of a transport molecule known as OATP organic anion transport protein understandable when it enters the hepatocyte there occurs the glutathione uh, there occurs a glutathione reaction so that to prevent the back reflux of the unconjugated bilirubin now in the liver we already have one molecule which is UTP so unconjugated bilirubin UTP combines to form conjugate bilirubin combines to form the conjugate bilirubin with the help of one enzyme UGT understandable uh, UGT this enzyme this uh, conversion into the conjugate bilirubin it is a conjugation reaction keep in mind friends conjugation reaction conjugation reaction the formation of conjugate bilirubin with the help of enzyme UGT and this reaction is called conjugation reaction now conjugate to bilirubin is known to be the water soluble it goes to first intrahepatic ducts biliary ducts or extra and then extra hepatic biliary ducts then along with the bile this bilirubin gets stored in the gallbladder so whenever we food, eat the fatty foods so our gallbladder has to contract for a lot of situations this uh, bilirubin goes to the intestine and in intestine we have our gut bacteria this gut bacteria acts over this conjugated bilirubin leads to the formation of one molecule which is uh, known as stercobilinogen it is a pigment and this stercobilinogen is responsible for the formation uh, for uh, causing the yellow color to the stools this conjugated bilirubin forms stercobilinogen this conjugated bilirubin can <coughs> goes back to the enterohepatic circulation and can uh, goes to can go to blood circulation when it goes to the blood, we know it is sensitive to water soluble. It gets excreted out through the kidneys into the urine. When it gets secreted out, forms urobilinogen. Urobilinogen is responsible for the yellow color in the urine. 
Now, friends, which are the points to remember? The points is daily bilirubin. Daily bilirubin production. Production. It is 300 milligram per day. Or we can write 4 milligram per kg per day. This you understand. Friends, when this bilirubin gets into the biliary ducts and get stored along with the bile, it gets stored in the gallbladder. One molecule over there acts, which is known as MRP2. With the help of this molecule, MRP2, the conjugated bilirubin goes to the biliary ducts and gets stored into the gallbladder. Okay, with the help of this molecule. Another point to remember now. Now, this is the normal bilirubin uh, metabolism pathway. So, friends, I told you that this bilirubin metabolism is very important to understand the syndrome jaundice. So, friends, what happens that whenever there is <coughs> a problem at the level of at the level of this enzyme or till this enzyme UGT, UTP glucuronide transferase, or whether the activity is less, then there occurs increased unconjugated bilirubin, right? Because till here the unconjugated bilirubin has been already formed. So if there is any problem at the level of UGT, this enzyme, or before that, then there would be increase in the unconjugated bilirubin. Keep in mind. Or uh, one point this is another point is whenever if the uh, conjugate bilirubin has already been formed and there is a problem after the formation of conjugate bilirubin whether it is in the biliary ducts problem obstruction or something then there would be increased accumulation of the conjugated bilirubin bilirubin <coughs> increased accumulation of the conjugate bilirubin in the body understandable because any of the bilirubin increases we i told you the jaundice syndrome i will talk about the jaundice next just you need to remember these things <clears throat> another point you need to remember that uh, total bilirubin total bilirubin rubin we have 1 to 1 point Three milligram per deciliter. When we tell any patient to get your LFTs, uh, liver function test, in the liver function test, it is major molecule to check. Total bilirubin is one to one point three milligram per deciliter. Another thing, the unconjugated bilirubin, unconjugated bilirubin is known as indirect, indirect bilirubin. Okay, and its value is zero point three to zero point nine milligram per deciliter and conjugated bilirubin is also known to be the direct bilirubin direct bilirubin and it uh, its normal range is 0 to 0 0.3 milligram per deciliter understandable this bilirubin metabolism is very important in the body just keep in mind this concept core concept then we'll understand about the jaundice syndromes i will talk about in the next video inspiring thank you from inspiring minds